a lot of people think Oklahoma State football, especially during the Mike Gundy era, they think elite wide receiver play, and they should get plenty of that in 2016. We bring in Cade Webb from Cowboys Ride for Free to set us up at the glamour position, these freakish athletes that people love to see making big plays down the field. And Cade, uh, you've, you've got a, a crop here that should be extremely fun to watch, starting with your headliner, James Washington, coming off a prolific 53-catch uh, season, over 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Not a whole lot of guys out there, Cade, averaging 20-plus yards per reception. Marcel Aitman, not a bad number two choice either. No, not at all. You know, these, uh, these guys are both uh, potential all-Big 12 caliber receivers, potential – uh, all American caliber receivers, James Washington, more so specifically, uh, like, like Mark said, uh, 53 catches over a thousand yards, 10 touchdowns. And he'll, he'll improve on that this year. That was just, I believe his true sophomore season. Uh, he contributed a lot in his true freshman season in 2014, uh, kind of broke out in 2015. And now you can kind of see the fruits of his labor in 2016. You know, he could be the next guy in these, the kind of Des Bryant, Justin Blackman, uh, Etc. mold with Oklahoma State. You could see him be that next elite wide receiver in the country. Uh, James Washington could be. And moving to Marcel Aitman, you know, with a 6'4 frame at wide receiver, there's not a lot of guys that are that athletic uh, that can play on the outside uh, and still be, like, mobile enough and agile in order to make catches on the edge. Uh, but that's what he brings, and he brings speed as well. So, uh, Marcel Aitman, you know, he's kind of underperformed at least to what we thought he could when we brought him on as a four star in 2012. Um, and a fun little bit on Marcel Aitman back when uh, EA canceled the, uh, the NCAA football series, he was one of a handful of guys to receive a check for his likeness. Uh, so I thought I'd throw that in there. He's one of the only guys that received a check that is still active in the NCAA. Uh, so I thought I'd throw that in there. But, you know, he could, you know, at 6'4, he could potentially break out and have 1500 yards and it wouldn't surprise me it really wouldn't it just depends on you know how hard he's willing to work because that's been the knock on him is his work ethic kate not to pick on your non-conference schedule but central <laughs> michigan central arkansas and texas san antonio not uh, necessarily ohio state alabama and usc but that's not where True. james washington unlike some baylor wide receivers possibly that's not where he bulked up his stats he played his best against the best competition in the Big 12. Huge game against TCU, 5 for 184, three touchdowns, hit up Oklahoma. I know you were playing from behind that entire game, but against the Sooners, 7 for 169 and a touchdown. Great game against Kansas, Kansas State as well, and a huge game against Texas Tech, 4 for 200, two touchdowns. So this guy's showing up in the big conference games as you try to compete uh, for another conference championship there. Yeah, absolutely. And a fun fact also about that Texas Tech game, he also, James Washington, had a 75-yard touchdown run on in that game too. So, you know, he can kind of do it all. He uh, They use him in the wide receiver screens, and, you know, when he runs, his head doesn't move at all. He runs like a sprinter. He's He's got four, four speed straight downhill, and, you know, it's hard It's hard for a lot of a lot of cornerbacks to catch him when he gets going that fast. But I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do. So you've got a close to 100 catches just out of Washington and Aitman coming back from 2015. But in addition to them, you have some fairly productive receivers in talking about Jalen McCleskey, Austin Hayes, guys that uh, actually have already contributed. So a lot of depth at this position. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what makes this uh, this position group for Oklahoma State so valuable. This is probably the best uh, wide receiver group in the Big 12, and you could stack it up against the best wide receiver groups in the country. You know, it could probably stack up against USC with the Dory Jackson, uh, but it's uh, talented enough and it's deep. It's not, uh, it's not just top level surface talent. It's deep. Uh, you've got Jalen McCleskey who really had a great freshman season, true freshman season, especially for a guy that wasn't heavily recruited. He was just a two-star uh, athlete out of somewhere in Louisiana. I'm not quite sure, but you know, not a highly touted guy and Gundy took a chance on him and it paid off. But with Austin Hayes, he's now a senior. He's been in the program and contributing on a regular basis with Oklahoma State for those four years. So uh, it's very interesting. And you've got a fifth-year senior in Jawan Seals, who has also been one of those guys that you hope at some point could break out. He's got the talent. Uh, he's made many a diving catch in his uh, time at Oklahoma State. So it's a talented group, absolutely. 
uh, it really their ceiling is as high as they want to make it. And especially with a guy like Mason Rudolph throwing him a football. Now, if we move to the Cowboy back position, uh, Blake Jarwin is the most accomplished uh, player coming back there. Missed three games last year, but still came up with 17 receptions and two touchdowns. If you can kind of set us up at the Cowboy back. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, the Cowboy back is kind of a fullback tight end hybrid. They'll split out the Cowboy back. They'll uh, put him in the, they'll bring him back in the diamond. They'll put him on the line. So this is a very versatile position. Uh, and it's kind of revolutionary for the Big 12. Not a lot of schools around the Big 12 will do it. You'll see more four wide receiver, five wide receiver sets in the Big 12 rather than three wide and a tight end in the Big 12. But uh, this is kind of an interesting position for Oklahoma State. You know, it, it can either make or break the passing game or running game. It, it totally depends on what they're trying to do with the scheme. For example, you know, Blake Jarwin and Jeremy Seaton were the starting Cowboy backs last year. They both uh, get injured and against Oklahoma. Now you've got Zach Veach, who was not probably expecting to play, uh, and it kind of collapsed the entire thing. But the Cowboy back is a very integral position. Uh, with Blake Jarwin, he returns the bulk of the uh, experience. Uh, Keenan Brown, who I think is probably the most interesting storyline with this entire football team, he was a four-star recruit out of Texas, uh, 6'3", 240, brought on 6'3", 200, and they bulked him up. Now he's probably too big to be a wide receiver, but perfect for the Cowboy back. Uh, you can't let that kind of athleticism go to waste. So it'll be interesting to see what they can do. They're not going to wow you with stats, but they uh, they make the they're probably what makes the train go. So, so the legacy of Rashawn Woods, Justin Blackman, Des Bryant, even going back to Hartley Dykes back yeah. in the day, uh, lives on at Oklahoma State, and the likes of uh, James Washington and Marcel Aitman. Cade Webb uh, helping us out at wide receiver. Fun discussion because there's so much talent to talk about, Cade. Appreciate the uh, time. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. Thanks for having me.